Hello, my name is Aurika Savitskaita. I'm a co-founder of HelmetBasedVentilation.com. In this video, I will show you two helmets made by Italian company Harold. This is Helmet One Har, and another one is Fast Har. So let's start with the One Har. This one-piece helmet it has a hard ring on the bottom. The hard ring is very, um, uh, very light and uh, thin. So it's good because it doesn't add any uh, weight to the helmet. Um, it connects actually the top part with the bottom, uh, soft color. It is silicon, stretchy, and as you can see, it doesn't work when you stretch. Uh, it's pretty thin, uh, so it should feel really comfortable on a patient's neck and uh, cause less skin irritation. So the top part uh, has a um, few uh, ports, so uh, on the front and the bottom there are ports for any tubings uh, or lines. Uh, also there is a small port for monitoring CO2 levels or pressures. Uh, the inlet and outlet are, ports are actually on the hood part. and. Uh, what is nice on the outlet side, you have a built-in manometer. The manometer is very important to measure actual pressures that are in a helmet, especially during helmet CPAP therapy. Uh, the study showed that the, the pressure actually can be higher in a helmet than it is set on a PEEP valve, uh, especially the PEEP valves that are spring-loaded. So by Having this manometer on the helmet, you can prevent from having too high pressures in the helmet and provide the adequate uh, ventilation for the patient. Also, if you see that pressures are fluctuating too much, um, you know that you need to increase the airflow for the helmet CPAP therapy. Now the patient access port is just the um, easy um, top that screws on and uh, you can fit your arm easily here do the patient care uh, also the top has an anti-asphyxiation valve so this membrane will um, open when the pressure is about two centimeters of water and let the ambient air enter the helmet very important when you are closing this port, you want to really tighten and uh, you will uh, feel it here a little click. Uh, so that means that the helmet, the port is staying on and it's not going to fall off. Underarm straps, easy uh, to adjust, easy to take it off in case of emergency and also has a soft um, cushions to prevent any skin breakdown. Uh, in the axillary area. Now, um, the other helmet we have here is the Fast Heart. It has uh, one more built-in feature, so it's a zipper. Uh, what is nice about the zipper is that you can have a full access to the patient's head. Uh, so in case if you need to even intubate the patient, you don't have to take the helmet off you can just open the zipper and intubate the patient. It also has a built-in uh, anti-asphyxiation valve, uh, but don't get confused. It is not a patient access port. It's just an anti-asphyxiation valve. It's very different than the in um, uh, one heart design. Uh, again, same thing, manometer, which is very important. And uh, what is nice uh, with this helmet also is that you can have a separate part, which is the cushion, inflatable cushion that you put around the patient's neck. So first you put the helmet on, then you put the cushion and you inflate that. And it gives you two benefits. One, it, re uh, it reduces the internal volume of the helmet which is very important when you are using helmet uh, for the pressure support ventilation. It helps with the patient ventilator synchrony. Uh, another good uh, benefit of it is that it helps actually the, to keep the helmet 
low. So we know that underarm straps are for uh, preventing the helmet to rise up and also by keeping a nice neck seal and prevent air leaks. Now this cushion also uh, helps to keep the helmet down. Um, there's some studies show that you can use uh, only cushion and you don't need to use the underarm straps, but um, I would say you have to try it and see how the patient tolerates. Uh, maybe you can use both uh, to minimize the pressure in the axillary area and also not uh, putting too much pressure on a patient's uh, neck area. Uh, again, the um, uh, helmets come in different sizes, so this is small sized and large. Uh, you can uh, measure the patient's neck and then uh, based on that, you will choose the correct helmet size. Now I will show you how you connect it to the airflow and how it inflates. Here I have fast hard helmet on. When you're applying on the patient, make sure you have two clinicians who can stretch the neck collar. So it is a gentle application. Uh, the neck collar feels really comfortable on the, on the skin. It is, like I said, soft, stretchy. Um, now I have already airflow connected. I'm using the smooth, uh, smooth bore ventilator tubing to reduce any noise in my helmet. I connected the antiviral, antibacterial filter and a peep valve on the exit port. I set the PEEP at 10, so we will see what will be the manometer measurements uh, based on uh, these settings. Now, as you can see with this helmet, you have a full access to the patient's head. When you're closing, there are little tags, plastic tags that help you to hold the helmet in place, but uh, they're not very strong, so they can may rip, so it happened with me before, uh, but honestly, you can open the zipper without even having them there. Now I'm gonna close the zipper. So you know, I can start to feel pressure in my ears, uh, which is normal. And it will go away, that feeling, in a couple minutes or so. There is no noise in the uh, helmet. It is kind of white noise, calming, nothing too loud that would irritate me. Underarm straps, I adjust it so it keeps the helmet in place, and it has about one inch gap between the shoulders and the rings. Um, now the manometer. Um, manometer is showing the pressure in the helmet is 12 centimeters of water when we set it up on 10. Well, the reason is because we're using um, the antibacterial uh, filter. It does create, it adds some pressure. So about two, three centimeters of water will, of pressure will be added if you're using a filter. When you lay back, uh, it feels comfortable. Uh, again, you have to make sure that the helmet doesn't press forward because then you create an air leak and a front. Now I will put inflatable cushion inside of the helmet. <laughs> so I inflated the cushion already. And um, nicely fits in. We will see if this cushion actually helps to keep the helmet down without using underarm straps. Uh, 
Helmet in place. Um, with a peep of 10, as you can see, the helmet is rising up and we have an ear leak. So, my advice would be to use underarm straps, even if you uh, have a cushion inflated inside. Uh, because the air leak is the biggest issue with the non-invasive ventilation, and the helmet is the best to prevent them. But it can be done only by using uh, underarm straps to keep the helmet in place, especially when you have higher pressures and higher flow. Well, thank you to the company Harold for making this helmet, and I hope to see them used to save patients from um, intubation and uh, help them to recover faster. Thank you.